everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Book Chat. So in our theme at looking at distinctly black Canadian experiences, the book that I have today I'm really excited about uh, mostly because, well for two reasons. So there's not a lot well known about this story in just sort of general um, Canadian history. Um, and then there's really not a lot available for children about this particular topic. So this, for me, uh, makes this a great book. So the book is called Africville. And Africville it was a community settled just outside of Halifax in Nova Scotia. So it was settled in the 1800s. Um, so a lot of formerly enslaved black people ended up living there, um, as well as some loyalists left over from the Civil War and, you know, people who had come from the U.S. Um, came to, that's where a lot of black Canadians settled. So, um, this became a community unto itself. Um, the thing that I love about this book is that, so it, it no longer exists. Af Africville no longer exists and we'll get to that. But um, this book has a very distinctive um, Eastern Canadian flair to it. So I want to read you this page. Um, it smells where it says where home smells like sweet apple pie and blueberry duff. So I am not going to lie to you. I had to Google blueberry duff because um, I had no idea what it was. But it turns out it's um, sort of like a, well it is, it's a pudding type uh, creation. <laughs> so if you think Christmas pudding, so not like chocolate pudding, vanilla pudding, but if you think Christmas pudding, um, it's that kind of creation. So there's some good learning there for me. Um, and so you can see it, it takes on and you know it's, it's very regional. So um, it, it's the black Canadian experience, but, but very specifically black Eastern Canadian experience. Um, and the illustrations are beautiful. They really capture uh, the maritime spirit. So um, I love that they're talking, this little girl's talking about going to Africville. It says, uh, take me to where the pavement ends and family begins. So this is one of the photos in the book. And you can see the, the bright colors um, and the illustrations, like I said, are beautiful. So that leads me on to the problem with Africville. So if you'll notice, it says, take me to where the pavement ends and family begins. Um, although it was basically an extension of Halifax and people who lived in Africville paid taxes to the city of Halifax, um, that particular community, uh, which had about 400 people living in it, was very, very neglected. Um, so there were no roads, there was no electricity, there was no running, wa running water. Um, and I just want to read to you, this is from the Canadian Encyclopedia, which if you are ever looking for a topic that has to do with Canadian history, the Canadian Encyclopedia online is a great resource. Um, so when they're talking about the problems in Africville, the city of Halifax continued to place undesirable services in Africville in the second half of the 19th century. These included a fertilizer plant, slaughterhouses, Rockhead prison, the night soil disposal pits, which were for human waste, and the infectious diseases hospital. In 1915, Halifax City Council declared that Africville will always be an industrial district. Many Africville residents believed anti-black racism was behind these decisions. Because you have to remember that um, it was declared an industrial dis district, but it was where people had made their homes. So it wasn't actually an industrial district. It's where Halifax City Council decided to put all of these things. Um, and a couple of interesting things. Uh, Duke Ellington's father-in-law was from Africville and Portia White, who was a black Canadian singer who you may not have heard of, but Google her, she's spectacular. Um, she was a teacher in Africville. So 
it has a very rich history, even though it's a, a t it was a tiny little place. Um, and it's now, it, uh, the government issued a formal apology in 2010 uh, because the people who lived there eventually were forced to move. So um, the government just kind of came in and, and said, you, you don't live here anymore. Um, here are some places you can live. And the payouts were not, um, they weren't fair. And so it broke up this community and put the people who live there in often very bad situations um, because of, of how the transition was handled. But um, I think it's wonderful to see that we are bringing to light these things. I have a degree in Canadian history and didn't know much. So my degree is from about 20 years ago. It's not recent. Um, but until probably three or four years ago, I didn't know Africville was a thing as a person with a four year degree in Canadian history. So if people who are really studying Canadian history in depth don't know anything about it because it's been brushed under the rug, um, then how how likely is it that anyone who doesn't really know or care to know that much about Canadian history that they will know anything about it. Um, so I was overjoyed to see this book by Shante Grant, who has written um, some other great children's books. But, uh, you know, I mean, this, this one, like I said, it's so important to me because most Canadians don't know about it. Most people around the world don't know about it. Um, and resources to be able to have conversations with children about these experiences is super duper important. I think it's how we will implement change in the future. So we need to have these resources to launch these conversations to talk about what happened. So I would really recommend that you grab a copy of this for your classroom library um, or your home library if you're watching this as a parent um, because it's a, it's a great story and it's an important piece of Canadian history that we need to know about. So please give this video a like if you enjoyed learning about something that was maybe new to you. And please remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below if you have any other great resources about Africville for young people, because I would love to build my collection even more. So thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, and I will see you next Monday.